Hi, welcome to Talking and Reading from Japan. I'm your host, Jemmy Woods. Here, I read episodes from the books I wrote and talk about anything that comes to my mind. I hope you enjoy with me. Um, today, I'll read an episode from one of my memoirs titled The Girl in Kyoto. Today's episode is called High Stakes. Um, this is about um, the, a gambling game that uh, we, I used to play at my grandparents' house during the New Year's. High Stakes This incident happened one New Year's at the end of the card game called Kabu, in which my uncle acted as dealer for the yearly family casino at my grandparents' house. He had lost quite a lot to my cousin, who was his son, as usual that night, and my cousin had left the table as the morning dawned. My uncle, my mother, and I were left at the table, and the game was about to close. My mother asked for a few more deals because she had also lost a large sum and wanted to get it back. To recover her loss quickly, she bet by the $100. The game was played for high stakes every year but I had never seen the stakes this high. She lost in succession, and her loss swelled to $500 in a flash. This is the last bet, she claimed in desperation, and put $500 on the table. She tried to offset her total loss on the last deal of the game. All at once, the tension skyrocketed, and strange silence filled the room. I held my breath and withdrew my usual small bet. The cards were dealt tensely, and my mother and my uncle showed their hands of fate. Both hands were ridiculously bad, but my mother's was even worse. She lost $1,000. Burying her head in her hands, she repeatedly uttered, It can't be. Can't be true. I saw tears in her widely opened bloodshot eyes. Then she repeated, Oh my, oh my, in a faint voice for ten times and staggered away. I clearly remember her state of stupor. A couple of days later, back in her home, I enticed her into playing Kabu with me since I learned how poorly she played it and I knew I would win. I used to receive cash as a New Year's gift from my relatives during New Year's and it would amount to $1,000. I dangled it in front of her and said that it would be her chance to get back her loss. She took it, and we played for $1,000. As I had thought, she lost another $1,000 to me. She said she couldn't pay, and I offered her the installment plan. 
I got one hundred dollars more to my monthly allowance of thirty dollars for the next ten months. That was the richest year in my early teens. Many years later, she failed in real estate investment and lost most of her family fortune that had been inherited for generations. The amount she lost that time was well over one million dollars. And that was the money I was supposed to inherit. That was today's episode. Uh, my mother didn't gamble often. She had never gambled usually, except for uh, this one day uh, in a visit to my grandparents' house. It's a, a special occasion uh, for a New Year's visit. It's an a annual tradition for my family. And uh, when we visited my grandparents' house in New Year's, um, a gambling night was held um, especially for that night only. But um, that was the only occasion my family played gambling. So you can easily imagine how exciting it was. And a game called Kabu that we used to play for gambling was um, like uh, um, was a um, blackjack like game by um, using cards and uh, uh, we uh, it started um, um, small amount a small bet but um, as the night um, uh, the night uh, grew uh, deep uh, deeper the the amount of bet got um, bigger and so the tension in the room uh, was um, intensified gradually. And uh, uh, to uh, make things uh, clear, this is uh, gambling just among my family members, my uh, grandparents' uh, uh, family, and uh, um, uh, visitors that were us, uh, my parents and my sister and me. So there were uh, no um, other relatives or neighbors or no strangers got involved in this game. This is, uh, this was a strictly family game. So don't worry, it's not um, illegal <laughs> activity. So don't, and don't come to arrest me, please. <laughs> and I, um, as I said 
here, talked here before, um, my uncle played as a dealer every time. And he lost a lot every year. I never had seen him win. And uh, I, although, despite a, despite a small bet, I uh, stuck to the table until the dawn. So the amount of my earning was not so small, not so little uh, by the end of the game. And that um, used to help my scarce allowance and because um, after after I got in my early teens, as you know, there are well, lots of things in the world that I wanted to buy. So uh, this game helped me a lot. But that particular year was the biggest earning I had ever had because of my mother's misfortune. And uh, I knew I would win easily because her hands are, especially that year, were so bad after game after game. So I thought I could um, take advantage of her bad luck that year. And I was right. I won a big time. But after that, um, I think my mother was so weak for high stakes. My mother wasn't suit for high stakes, I guess. But she was such a greedy woman. She's still greedy. She was the greediest woman I had ever seen. So her greed um, drove her to play for high stakes in not only in that family gambling, but also the investment or business. And so um, after, um, after I left home when I was 21 years old to become a musician, uh, my parents used to be farmers. They worked on the fields of our family's fields um, that were also inherited for generations. But <clears throat> after I left, um, my mother's greed uh, stopped working as a farmer. And she persuaded my father to do is um, real estate business and uh, she uh, sold 
sum up the family feels and um, built uh, an office building and uh, uh, an apartment complex and in in a short time just a uh, um five, five or less than 10 years she failed that business miserably and uh, that time the loss was too huge and then it um she lost that um real estate of hers entirely except for the house itself so she lost <clears throat> the uh, the office building and the apartment complex and um she uh, my parents uh, by that time my grandparents were passed away my par my grandparents passed away so my parents lived on that um the the savings that were left <clears throat> after they sold those uh, real estates but eventually uh, they couldn't um, afford to maintain their house itself and the land where the house stood because the high taxation and the maintenance fee. So, after, um, eventually, they sold everything, the house and the land that was our family's um, inheritance for almost uh, 1,000 years. They sold it. So, although I won a big time that particular ta particular year with the gambling card game from my mother, I took a big amount of money from my mother. I also lost my inheritance money because before I was able to inherit the fortune, they nullified, they lost everything. But, um, and now I also lost contact with them. I don't know how my parents are doing now because um, they cut me off but um, I um, because I left home to uh, purse my career um, I um, I didn't agree to um, success I didn't agree to inherit uh, any money as a successor of my family um, I abandoned that right so I Honestly, I didn't um, expect that um, I could uh, inherit uh, anything from my family because I um, 
withdrew everything by leaving my house. Uh, leaving my house meant I threw away every right to in inherit anything. So it wasn't a big shock to me when I heard that they um, sold the house or the land and lost everything because I, uh, I had already given up uh, to be a successor of the family. But um, just I thought um, it's uh, um, the place they sold was the my where my family lived for had lived for generations after generation mean easily for over 100 years the the ancestors of my family had lived on the exact spot that house stood so it's to me it was like Um, how my ancestors felt when my parents sold it. Um, if, um, for those who are, um, watching this podcast on video, on a video cast, you can see uh, the cover photo of this today's episode's book. And this is actually the house they sold. This is actually the place I grew up. And uh, the house itself was built when I was rebuilt when I was nine years old. But this uh, um, gate construction. This was the gate, the entrance to my house. Um, this gate uh, stood like this uh, well over 100 years. Possibly 200 years old because when my grandfather uh, was born, this gate uh, structure had already been here. But now, uh, since they sold it, uh, it um, the house and the gate, everything was demolished and uh, I don't know what it looks like now, S someone else's property. So my mother's uh, high stakes bet resulted in this misery. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for listening. Um, I'm Hitemi Woods. If you are interested in other things, other uh, materials or works of my own, such as other memoirs, books, or my uh, own music, my songs, uh, you can visit uh, hidemiwoods.com, H-I-D-E-M-Y woods.com, where um, you can see, you can find uh, 
all links to my songs, books, blogs, um, podcast, or um, even uh, uh, to SNS, or even to um, merchandise I design and uh, um, uh, I which merchandise that uh, features my uh, original illustrations and designs. If you like, um, please visit my website. Well, thanks again. Uh, I hope you uh, can come back here again and I can see you again here. Until next time, take care and be well.